Hi, this is a tutorial for a cantilever beam carrying a uniformly distributed load of 20 kN per meter. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the deflected shape of the beam only qualitatively and then calculate the bending moment at a number of points along the uh, beam so that we can draw the bending moment diagram. Okay, let's think about the deflection first. This is um, quite a straightforward beam and it's going to deflect by drooping downwards away from the support. If the beam originally is fixed at 90 degrees to the support, it will always remain at 90 degrees to the support as it projects from it. So when I draw the deflected shape of the beam, it always starts off at 90 degrees and now it's going to droop down. Oh, there it goes under its own self weight and or, or under the um, the applied load. We can uh, forget about the self weight for now though. Now what I want to do is I want to calculate the bending moment at a number of points along the length of the beam. So I'm going to divide the beam up into four portions and I'm going to work out the bending moments at points A, B, C, D, and E. And then draw my bending moment diagram. And I'm going to use the units of kilonewton meters. Looking at this deflected shape, I can tell that the top of this beam is going to be in tension and the bottom is going to be in compression. So I'm just going to draw a T across the top to remind me of that. Now I'm going to start thinking about working out the uh, bending moment at uh, number of points along the length of the beam. Right, the first place I'm going to start is at the tip of the cantilever. The tip, at the tip of a cantilever, the bending moment is always zero. That's nice to know. It's almost uh, kind of like a free gift at the start of every um, every bit of work like this. Now I'm going to move back one meter to point D, and I'm going to draw the bending moment, uh, the free body diagram at point D. Let's draw that out. Yeah. UDL, this is point D, that's point E, that's one meter length, and this UDL is 20 kilonewtons per meter, and there's one meter length of it, so if I multiply that by one meter, I know that the whole of that amounts to 20 kilonewtons. So one meter length of that load amounts to 20 kilonewtons. If that was all that was happening within this free body diagram, the whole thing would spin round in a circle around point D. But it's not. There must be an internal bending moment at point D that's resisting this turning. Right. So I have a force, 20 kilonewtons, acting vertically downwards. Where's the center of that force acting? Well, it's acting bang in the middle at a position just about 0.5 meters from point D. Okay, that's good to know. So when I take moments about point D, M D equals the force 20 times its distance from point D, 0.5. The whole thing is, would go clockwise around point D, so I'm going to call it positive because I'm arbitrarily saying that clockwise moments are going to be positive and that amounts to 10 kilonewton meters. That's good. I'm going to draw that onto my bending moment diagram now. Now my bending moment diagram, I have to decide which side of the beam I'm going to draw it. Well I always draw my bending moment diagrams on the tension face of the beam so it's going to be on the upper face which is the upper face is in tension and I'm just going to uh, put on some guides for myself here so I know whereabouts I'm roughly going to draw my bending moments. So if I call that 100, that's zero down there, that's about 50 there, and I'll call that 150. That's near enough. Near enough is good enough, that's what I say. So my first bending moment at point D is 10 kilonewtons a meter. Okay, that's about there, 10. That's about fair. Let's move on to point C. So 
at point C, I can draw out the uh, free body diagram. It's two meters long. There's E, there's C. It's going to have an internal bending moment to counteract this force turning around. And that force there, the, that UDL, is 20 kilonewtons a meter times two meters. So it all adds up to 40 kilonewtons. That 40 kilonewtons is acting at its center, which I calculate to be one meter away from point C. So when I calculate the bending moments at point C, at this point here, I'm looking to the right, and I've got 40 kilonewtons, so MC equals 40 kilonewtons times its distance is one meter, it's acting at a distance of one meter from point C, and it's going clockwise around point C. So the whole thing adds up to 40 kilonewton meters. That's good. I'll add this onto my diagram. I'm still on the tension phase, so I'm above the line. That's 40. Now I'm going to move to point B, draw out a free body diagram. There it is. B, E, and there's my UDL. 20 kilometers a meter, and the whole thing is 3 meters long. So the total load is 20 times 3, because 20 kilonewtons in the first meter, 20 in the second, 20 in the third, all adds up to 60 kilonewtons. And that load acts right at its center, straight down the middle. And I reckon that that distance is 1.5 meters from point B. So if I take a moment about point B now, to calculate the internal moment within the beam, MB equals this force, 60 kilonewtons, times its distance from point B, 1.5. It's all positive because it's going clockwise. 60 times 1.5, that's 90 kilonewton meters. Let's go over and mark it up on the little diagram. There's my bending moment diagram, that's about 90, just about there. Now I finally get through to point A. I'm not going to bother drawing out the uh, free body diagram for point A because I've kind of got it already with my initial diagram. So MA, it's going to be the entire load on the beam, which is 4 meters times 20. So that's 80 kilonewtons. That's the entire load on the beam. And I think that that's acting at a distance of uh, 2 meters. So it's acting centrally. On the, on the four meter beam, so at a distance of two meters from point A. The whole thing, once again, would go clockwise around point A, so I'm calling it positive. And that comes up to 160 kilonewton meters. Great. Can now go back to my bending moment diagram and add that on. Let's see if I draw this on. So I've got 150 there, so it's about here. 160. That's one six. There we go, 160. So if I join up the dots, let's see how good I am at that. Bending moment diagram is starting to look like a kind of concave curve that runs right down to the tip of the cantilever, which is zero. And the reason for that is that each time I move along the length of the beam, the load position changes and the load itself changes and it changes in this ever accelerating way. So the bending moment increases uh, exponentially as I get away from the tip of the cantilever. So typically, for any cantilever that's a UDL, I'm expecting the bending moment diagram to look like a curve. Oops, that should be zero at the end. Well, that's the end of this tutorial, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching.